Welcome to the Floor Academy podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Hedin, owner of Illustrious Hardwoods in Mesa, Arizona. This week, I have got the amazingly talented Crystal Sims with me of Preferred Flooring. I will let her introduce herself in just a minute. I thank you all for tuning in, whether live in the Facebook group as I record them on the podcast or on the YouTube channel that's now going. I want everybody to know that Floor Academy exists to help you move your business forward. We are having the conversations so that you can grow not just as an artisan, but as an actual business professional. We can help you get more money in your pocket, run more efficiently, free up that time so you can spend it with the people you actually want to spend it with and have a retirement. You do not have to slave away in this trade and we are here to help you grow so that that is not the case. Crystal, you have had one heck of an adventure over the past, oh, what, really the past year, because there was a little bit of delay with surfaces for 2021. But uh, let, let's go ahead, introduce yourself, give us the, that quick like little background, you know, a couple minutes, who you are, what you do, why you do it. And then let's really start digging into this this journey that has taken place over the last year. Crystal Sims have been installing flooring for almost 10 years. Um, it'll be 10 years in June. Um, so I started working for my brothers uh, as a part-time, in, or I'm sorry, as a temporary employee. And uh, just got into deep to where I felt like I was too committed. And really started to enjoy what I was doing after a few years in. And then so I became a crew leader and here I am. Okay. Uh, I mean, how did that, what was attractive about it, right? Like they asked you to be around temporarily. So how did that kind of evolve and what did, why was that even a thing that you were, you know, interested in? I obviously... I want to promote women in trades. That's one of the reasons why we're here, but that's definitely not a common thing. So what kind of, what, what drew you in? What made you want to do it? What was so attractive about being able to go and work with your brothers? Absolutely nothing. (laughs) Oh, so, but 10 years later, why are you still doing it then? Um, No, I, they asked me to work because I had lost my job and I had a one-year-old at, at home at the time. And so they, they asked me to come and work as a temporary. And after working for a while, I just felt, I felt like I was too loyal to them. Like they have put so much time into teaching me Mm -hmm. and I didn't want to leave because I just, I wanted to, I didn't want to feel like I was betraying them or something. Um, so that that is initially why I stayed, and then I had my third son. Um, yeah, I worked through two pregnancies doing this. So that was fun. Um, I had my third son three years ago, and I just really kind of assessed my life at that point. Like, what am I doing? Where am I trying to go? And then I decided that I just, you know, I've been in flooring at that time for six years. And I decided that that's already six years of my life committed to something. So I kind of dug deep at that point and accepted that this was going to be my career and I needed to make the most of it. So mm-hmm, that was when um, the NAFCT actually had their uh, heat weld and flash code certification. And I told Daniel that I wanted to sign up for it because I needed to start somewhere. And so okay. he ended up being an instructor at that one. Um, And I signed up and that was kind of the beginning of the education portion for me. Okay. And I mean, that, that has led to not that you weren't doing that stuff prior. I mean, you were out there working in the field with them, but then that really took this, like, let's get certified. Let's be serious about what we're doing. Um, So let's, let's start digging into this because there is a, there's probably a lot to cover in a, in a relatively short amount of time and we could probably go on and on about it for uh, hours and hours um essentially 
let's see if the if the competition the services was moved from January to June of 2021 so what maybe er well I don't know when when did the competition thing initially come up that you had to be entered because they didn't know that COVID was going to mess everything up so what was that probably like September 2019 October 2019 maybe I don't know I think Daniel didn't start asking me about it until April or May I think the Maybe it, uh, yeah, it all got pushed on hold. You're right. You're right. It was it was all very like quick and 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 having yeah. to do it, and then it wasn't installer of the year. It was we're going to do semifinals, and 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 there was a lot. But so your brother comes to you and he says, "Hey, like I I won t- in 2019. I think it'd be really good for you." What did that like? What did it look like when he came to you? He actually won in 2020. Um, yes, yes, he did. Years are flying by. I'm correct. <laughs> uh, he kind of was just put, um, giving out hints like, hey, services is coming up. Are you going to compete? And I'm like, you know, I'm not, I don't feel ready for that. And he never once told me that he thought I was ready. He just kept pushing it and pushing it. And so he's like, well, I'm just going to sign you up. And I was like, fine, whatever, just sign me up. <laughs> And then as soon as I said that, like, I kind of regretted it, but he knows, you know, being my brother, he knows me and he knows that I need the extra push. So Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. once he kept pushing, I kind of just whatever. And then he told me that um, Mario was signing up as well. And I'm like, man, you've got me going up against like people who have been in this trade for 30 years. I'm like, I'm not ready for that. And he's like, you are ready. He's like it doesn't matter how long people have been in the trade. What matters is the quality of your work. And he's like, and I know that you do good work. Mm-hmm. He's like, cause I trained you myself. <laughs> <laughs> I know. No, I believe that. I believe that a hundred percent. So, I mean, I, at that point it was like, I needed to do or fail. You know what I mean? Like I just had to get myself prepared because the, the hard part was already done. Right. Signing up. So, mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it. yes, you got to take that leap and I, I get it. You got to make yourself uncomfortable to grow, but I don't know that that was necessarily the hard part. And it, I, I think we'll, we'll find that out as the story kind of develops here. And so in June of 2021, we have surfaces and it's, the, they had eight carpet people and they had eight resilient people, six, eight, eight, I believe. Uh, eight, but then yeah. one guy kind of. I guess he had a family emergency, so he had to leave right away. Yeah, but I, we get eight and eight essentially to to compete to get it down to four, so that it surfaces this past surfaces that we just had in uh, twenty twenty two. What would be you know the four finalists? So walking in, it was it was already big news because you were the first woman to compete in the installation competition in its entire history and it's been on and it's been off and there's been years without it, but you were the first woman to compete. So there was already kind of this, I don't, everyone knew that it was happening and it was, it was going around and Hey, there's a girl, look, there's, there's a girl. Right. And it it was, it became this big thing, but you were, I can only assume nervous as as it was because you're competing on this stage where people can, can come up and and watch you. So what was that initial semifinals like for you? I thought I was going to vomit everywhere. (laughs) Fair enough. At least you were on cheat goods. It cleans up easy. (laughs) I was extremely nervous um, and I was just worried but like I'm working in front of all these people and my process might be a little bit different than theirs and so just to kind of be in my own space was really nerve-wracking for me like I didn't know what to expect going there Daniel really didn't give me anything and mm-hmm. I didn't attend the year that he went. So this was my first time even being at the event mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. So I didn't really know what to expect. And they don't show you the print until you show up, which actually probably made me the most nervous because I'm such a, I take a while to kind of get my game plan to make sure that I'm doing it the most efficiently as possible. 
So I was nervous that I was going to take too much time trying to figure out my game plan. Mm -hmm. But I just, once we started, I just kind of threw all of that out and said, I, this is, I'm here. I need to do my best. And uh, I, I tried to keep a smile on my face. I think I smiled more at the semifinals than I did the finals. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, I mean, it, it, it's, it's nerve wracking. Um, new experience. You're, you're on, you know, you're there. Everyone can see, but what was the, your overall takeaway from it, right? You're, you're this woman in a, in a man's world and you're, you're nervous. Like at the end of the day, obviously you come through, you make it to the finals, but what did, did anything really happen? Was it like this big kind of splash moment or was it just, it happened and, and we're, we're moving forward. And now in six months, I'm, I'm coming back for the finals. Um, I did get, quite a bit of attention afterwards. Uh, um, FCEF, the Floor Covering Education Foundation, reached out. Uh, some magazines reached out. Mm -hmm. I ended up doing a commercial for Shaw. So I did get some attention. Um, I became an... Uh, I can't even remember the name right now. I'm terrible. It's okay. It happens. You're on the spot. I know. Right. <laughs> But yeah, I did get some attention and to me it was not as significant because I'm just out there doing what I do. I didn't even think that what I did was any different than a man what a man goes out there and does. Mm -hmm. uh, I grew up with a, a single mom who has always worked in male dominated industries as well. So it was not different for me to see it that way. So it wasn't until later on, which we'll get into, that I really noticed the significance. Mm -hmm. And that's, I well, yeah, I mean, I, I there's probably so much we can talk about in this, but I know that the really, like, the big thing happened. So that's kind of where I'm working towards. So, I mean, like, things happened. There were changes. You were getting attention. And that's that's great. You know, the industry needs attention. Women need attention in the industry. But... It it seems like after a little bit, it kind of cooled down and it wasn't as there wasn't as much press around it. Uh, and so we we get to January and there's been there's been a few things happening. And so surfaces comes around and for the first time ever, the because of the women in the flooring business, excuse me, Facebook group, we get a mini women's conference as part of surfaces, which is amazing. Like they had their own little powwow. They had their own like dinner. We've got the first female ever in the installation competition. There was a lot of hype and press and Empowered. just, uh, yes. A, 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 in this environment that is normally very male dominated, very much about, manufacturers and new products coming out and that's not what i saw this year like the it, it could just be the connections that i have the people that i deal with but we were definitely more focused on other aspects of what was happening at the show and so there was a lot of hype coming up to it what what were you feeling going into the competition as it being the finals and now it yes you okay i made the finals but it you'd been through it, but now there's, there's a little bit higher stakes and more eyes are watching. What was that pressure like? What was going through your mind and, and how was that affecting you in your personal life, but also in the competition? Um, I mean, the pressure there was, I mean, there was obviously a lot of pressure, but I didn't feel like that was affecting me as much. But the only thing that comes to mind is I hope I don't lose and let all these people down. Like yeah. that was my biggest thought. And I felt like if I didn't take it home that I know people were still going to be proud of me, but it was myself that I had to make proud, right? Like I know it's a big accomplishment getting to this space in life, but I guess that was my biggest, my most nerves going into this. Okay. Um, and I mean, I, in a way, they did get the best of me. 
Well, best of you as in like best of you as it, it pushed you to bring the best out of you or they got the best of you as in you you let them down and they they got to you and you weren't able to make it happen or both. Well, I, don't, I don't think the pressure got to me. I think that um, I was in my own head and just because mm-hmm. going into this one, I wasn't as nervous as I was the first time. Only because I have, ex- I, at this point, I had experienced it before. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I practiced a few times before we went just to make sure that, you know, things were still good. Um, and I'm just, Jose always has this things where, thing where I, he says I will things into existence because I'm so worried about messing up or doing one specific thing wrong and I will it to happen. Mm-hmm. And Apparently that's true. <laughs> well, so I, I mean, I believe you because we can get so caught up that we'll create the situation because you just, you're so focused on not doing it that you make it happen because you're trying not to. So is that where the, the gap in the corner came from? Yeah. So I actually had practiced my um, pattern scribing because I didn't use that technique in the semifinals. Mm-hmm. And so I just kind of wanted to bring that to the forefront to show that it is a possibility that I do it. And when I did that, um, I didn't have, when I created my new template for my inside corners, I didn't create it the right way. So one of my corners ended up being a little short and it really bummed me out. But at that point it was like, I'm faced with, I can try to fix this and hopefully they don't notice. Or I can own it and I can prove to them that mistakes are made, but I can also fix that and it can still look beautiful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I kind of made that executive decision there. Um, I mean, I, at that point of the day, it was around lunchtime. I was a little frustrated, but I kept going. Obviously I didn't have any other choice. Yeah. So I did tell one of the judges right away, um, Efren, and I asked him which type of repair he would prefer to see. So he didn't really answer me. So I just did my <laughs> own best judgment. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they can answer that question. <laughs> Good try, though. Good try. I, I like it. Um, so, I mean, we're in the thick of it at this point. I, I let's Let's back up a little bit because we were talking about there there was some external pressure coming because there there was hopes and dreams of of many people and we had the women of the flooring business group and and doing their conference thing and you were there and and you experienced a little bit of that i know you were kind of helping with the booth or the building the pods out for the competition but then you made your way over to that um that seminar on monday but then they had their party and so what you got to go and meet a lot of powerful women that I know because I was in the room too, and it, it is it's intimidating for me to be in there. And it, like, there's some very wise, smart women that are way better than any man in this industry. A lot of men in this industry, for sure. So, being able to go in that room and and be a part of it, I mean, essentially, like it seems, you know, they were. It, it wasn't in a negative way that they were placing their hopes and dreams on you. Right. But it's also, Hey, look, how much attention can this get us and like help us really shine. And it's not, I don't want to make it a negative thing. It's, it's not, but I get how it could start weighing on you. So what was that evening like and how did it kind of help build you up, but maybe also, add a little weight on your shoulders. Um, I was a, so I attended the, the conference first mm-hmm. and it was a really good conference. They had some, some ladies on the panel up there kind of going through their story and giving some advice. And um, they really, a lot of the things that they spoke about kind of hit home for me, like things that I just have never thought about or, um, some things I haven't even experienced. And so after the conference, I was able to go up to the, what did they call it? 
the, know. They had their, the, yeah, they had their little reception up on the yeah. uh, at the rooftop bar. Yeah, and I got to meet some people up there, and I was, I wasn't. It felt really good to be in a room full of powerful women who know you and who encourage you and just genuinely want like are excited to see the a woman in the in the competition Mm -hmm. so i don't feel like there was and there was no negative pressure for me i genuinely just felt all of the love and empowerment and encouragement like it was really really cool and then and then i received an award which absolutely blew my mind i did not expect that at all and so i thought that that was one of the highlights of my trip for sure mm-hmm. so uh, between i mean you're talking about the, there was women at the conference talking about things that you hadn't really considered before or experiences that you hadn't had and then you you go and and you're in this room and and they're there and you're able to have the conversations you get an award i mean what did any of that information immediately apply and and help you be able to perform better through the competition? Um, yes. So it was at the conference that I realized that Daniel it has been my mentor for the last ten years, which is crazy. You you don't go through life reali- not realizing that people are actually like mentoring you and stuff, but mm-hmm. um. And then I actually had met my mentor on Tuesday night, my new, my, another mentor that I asked to be my mentor. Mm-hmm. And some of like in the half an hour conversation that we had, she was just throwing out all of these things that tips that I can do to kind of get rid of my nerves and stay positive. And even the the women that I talked to the night before, before I even went into the competition, just the the way that they stay positive and empower people, um, it's it's kind of contagious. There is mm-hmm. no way to be negative when you're surrounded by that many happy people. Mm-hmm. So I guess that that was something that I really took away was just being positive no matter what the outcome was going to be. That's, I love it. it it's a simple message and it's... <sighs> I, you know, being in that room, there was a lot of very happy, motivated people in that room and it's spectacular. And I, she's a friend of the show and I don't want to leave her out. And so you can go back, listen to the episode, Organic Social Media with Shannon Vogel. That's who Crystal has asked to help mentor her as as a next step and kind of moving forward. And I think it's when I heard that you and her had connected and made this happen, it blew my mind. And I was like, oh, that's a scary thought. Like, what's going to become of this? Um, what I saw at Surfaces this year is, and this is kind of like a, a sidetrack, but I saw a bunch of people, and not just you, but I saw a lot of relationships be developed this year and connections be made that I think will profoundly affect the industry over the next five to ten years. And that's one of those relationships where I was like, oh, I, okay, we're going to watch this one. And I like something, something's going to happen. I don't know what it's going to be, but there's going to be some big thing that comes from this relationship. And it's, I'm like, I'm excited to see the fruit that is bared from that happening. It's, it's, it's amazing because like, she's, she's a powerhouse in and of herself. And, and so are you rightfully. I- I talked to her for, so Jim Aaron actually um, introduced us to each other okay. at CEF and just talking to her for 20 to 30 minutes. And like I told her, I was like, I think I'm going to ask her to be my mentor. I was telling um, Erica and Tanya. And while I was telling them that, apparently her and Daniel were having a conversation <laughs> about how they're going to tell me that she should be my mentor. So we we're having these separate conversations about her mentoring me. And uh, <laughs> it was just crazy how it all kind of came together within a matter of like an hour, an hour and a half. 
Yeah, no, I, I, I heard, and I, I've talked to her since, and uh, I, I reached out to her husband, and I've actually, he's been involved in the flooring industry for a long time, and I was like, hey man, can I, can we chat? Like, I know you're not doing a whole lot right now, like you're kind of looking for a new project. I was like, can I, can I be one of your projects? <laughs> So I've got to, I've got to work on that. But there was, like I'm saying, there, there was a lot of big connections made that I saw. And so a lot of, I've, I've seen reviews of the show and everyone's like, oh, the manufacturer, like it was displays were lackluster and there wasn't a lot of new products. And I get like, that's classically been the reason to go to the show. But between you being in the competition, the competition itself, the women having their own kind of like powwow day and, and really making it happen was there was some big things that happened at the show that are going to move this industry forward in a very positive light. Let me bring a different energy, a different type of energy. And to have so many women that were involved in this, in this event this year, Mm -hmm. I think that that's what really felt empowering to everyone. No, I, I agree. And it's not a, it's not like a, a feminazi kind of like feminist thing going on. It's just a, Hey, we're here. We're good at what we do. And, and we want to, we can, we can do it. We want to be involved and respected. And there's, yeah, there's no reason to not. This is how we can help you. Mm-hmm. We, we can be important too, just in different, some, some people in different ways and some people in the same way, you know? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, what was it, let's kind of, let's, let's break this down a little bit. What, what really impressed you about like Shannon off the top where you were just like, I, I got to make this happen. Like what, what blew you away about her? I told her that she spoke to my soul. She's a, what did I call her yesterday? A soul speaker. She's a soul speaker. Um, I don't know. It's just her aura, her vibe. Like within the first five minutes of talking to her, talking to her, I knew um, she did most of the talking because I'm extremely awkward, and so she did most of the talking. But she just threw out so many different types of advice and got so much information out of me that like I don't usually tell new people, which is funny. So I just felt like she was the type of person who could help what I help me achieve what I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. And I, I had told Daniel just the day before, after the women's leadership conference, I said, I think that I'm ready for a female mentor. Like I need, Daniel's a great mentor. He has taught me a lot. He has pushed me, but from, from a, he can't teach me anything from a female's perspective, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, how to be confident, how to, um, love being in my own body and stuff. So, so that's really what, where Shannon comes in because she's so confident in her skin and that's really what I aspire to. Yes. That's I, she caught the end of my talk last year and like, we talked for like five minutes and I was like, okay, this is somebody like, I have to, we'll get you on the show, but like, I just need you in my life. We need to communicate. And it gets very quickly and easily noticed that like, okay, there's something special here. I need to be involved. So I, I a hundred percent agree. Um, talking about being comfortable in your own body. Let's, we, we can kind of go a little backwards here, but it, it, it plays a role. Uh, I'm going to embarrass you a little bit there. If you, if you ask one of Crystal's brothers very nicely, they can, they can show you a great video of, of Crystal trying to jump over some glue on a, on a project she was working on. And and let's just say that she doesn't make it. Um, You were a very different person then. And you, you've been on your own, like, I want to be comfortable as me and proud of me journey and working out. You've lost a ton of weight. You look amazing. How has that played into, I, I, I want to say that started before you even started doing the competition, but like that's had to have played a role in you participating in it and how you felt about yourself and were able to get better at work and excel even more. Yeah, I so I had um, weight loss surgery to a little over two years ago. I had the gastric sleeve. And that 
so before that is actually when I decided to, that I was going to kind of dig deep into the flooring business. Um, but then I had that weight loss surgery. And once the weight started to come off and I started to work out, you know, you initially you feel better about yourself. You, you feel better because you're eating better. I was working out. So things were getting easier. And even still, sometimes I'm like, I don't see much of a difference in myself, not with my outer appearance, but inside. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a really big difference if you knew me when I was younger. I was actually voted class slacker my senior year of high school. And so I have really been working on myself, listening, listening to podcasts, reading books, listening to audio books, just trying to figure out who I am as a person and who I'm trying to be. Mm -hmm. um, I want to be a better parent um, and just to feel like I'm making a difference in the world. And that's really my ultimate goal. I just want people to know that I came from nothing and even feeling like, like nothing and that you can change your life. It is possible. Mm. You just have to really dig deep and work hard. That's that's really big. That's deep. Um, that I I think that the way American society is even portrayed these days, right? Like, go pick up a magazine, turn on the TV, look at an ad on the internet. It's negative emotions about yourself are, are very easy to pick up when what's displayed by media is the complete opposite of what most women are. It's just, it's, it's, there's a completely fake image displayed and for men too, you know, how many men are really truly walking around with rock hard six pack abs, right? Like most of us probably have more dad bod going on and, and a little pouch and like, we're, we're kind of overweight. Like it's what's sold isn't true. And so you, you're trying to live up to this standard that, that doesn't exist. And so I, I commend you for working on yourself and, and making yourself more healthy. And I, I, but I also know that you've realized like, Hey, this may not be the attainable standard for me, but I can get to where I feel good about me. I know from seeing pictures on, on social media and you're working out and stuff, you'd made a, a comment like, I want to be a MILF. And I thought that was, <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. You know, you took this picture and you're like, I want to feel good about me. But it wasn't like, I know it was, it was joking and funny and, and whatnot, but you're serious too. And it's not like, I know you're not going for that magazine image. You're going for like, I'm really happy with who I am. And it, it you were conveying a much more positive message about it. I'm, it's like, don't get me wrong. If you are a bigger person and you feel confident, like that's the ultimate goal. The outer appearance is just a bonus, right? Or whatever. It just doesn't mean as much. But for me personally, losing the weight helped me to start to build my confidence and want to change who I was previously. So like for me, you're right. The ultimate goal is to feel good about who I am all around, not mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. trying to have a nice body because, listen, when you lose 120 pounds, things don't always sit right. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's 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 for sure. Things stretch and don't go back. And I yeah. look, I, I much respect. You've had three kids. You've lost 120 pounds. Like you look, you look good. I, I'm not like congratulations. And you you have. I know being around your brothers, they definitely care for you. Family is is absolutely huge with you guys, and we can we'll we'll touch on that a little bit. Uh, but I I know that those two they they still to this day call you baby sister, and they probably treat you like one sometimes. And I bet you it gets obnoxious because they're always always looking out for you and like oh we got a protector, and and that's not necessarily what you always need. <laughs> no, it's funny actually because they probably embarrass me the most and beat me up the most and i'm pretty used to that because i fight back now i learned to fight back a little bit in the last few years and so they they leave me alone a little bit more but <laughs> definitely they they definitely have mm -hmm. my back 100 percent of the time mm -hmm. always that 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 whole the whole company the whole family 
so at the competition, um, hold on, hold on. Here, if if you're watching the the Facebook or you got the YouTube, everyone came out wearing the. I, I'm blocking my mic. Hold on. So I'll, I'll get it up here and I'll show it. But everyone came out wearing these awesome crystal shirts, and there's a bunch of funny hashtags on the back. But what, 15, 17, 20 people maybe at the most? I mean, it was. It, there was a lot of showing on Thursday morning for you of, nope, what, Wednesday evening? Maybe the second day of competition? I don't remember when. Yeah. when. Yeah, Wednesday evening before the end of the show. You know, there was all these people, and, and they came out, and everyone's wearing the shirt, and, and they make a scene, and they all raise their fist at you. And it was the things that, preferred flooring stands for the things that the Gonzalez family stands for is it's great for this industry. It's addictive to be around. Uh, Everyone razzes each other, but at the end of the day, you can see that everybody's there to support each other. And truly like if you're struggling, they're going to lift you up. They're going to drag you along kicking and screaming when you want to be down and, and make it happen. So how did, What'd that do for you? Like just that the outpouring of your family, your colleagues, uh, other people, you know, I know like Sonny was there and had a shirt. And so you guys have been friends with, with Sonny Callahan for a long time. Just all these people that you're involved with in the industry came out and made this uh, ascent. Nobody else had a huge display like that going on. That's for sure. Um, yeah, it really surprised me. I did not know that was going to happen. And so they actually have a video of me turning around and seeing them. And I have not even seen what my face looked like in that video when I turned back around towards the camera. But it was, it was really cool because I know my family and we always tell each other that we're extra. And I didn't know that some people don't even know what that means, but basically it's, you put the extra in extraordinary. You go, you always go a little bit overboard, a little bit more than you really should. And so <laughs> I'm used to that kind of stuff because we love everything extra in our family. And so it really put a smile on my face and kind of amped up the energy towards the end there for me. Did you, did you need that push to kind of finish up and get through or, I, you know, did that make it a little bit easier to know that it, it look, it's not an easy eight hours, two days in a row. That's for sure. It, it, it's a hard 16 hours. Yeah. I was hurting that day pretty bad. Um, I don't know that it like, yeah, it, it definitely helped me get, get through the rest of the day. <laughs> I, what is that? Ben, you know, like I, we, I, I've titled the ep- episode, right? Pressure poise and, and, and pathways. And so this is, you've always kind of had these pathways open up to you and, and there's definitely a lot more now and, and we'll, we'll dig into that in a second, but you had pressure from yourself. You had pressure from your family and not that it's negative pressure, but there's still like, you can do it. Like you come on, you're going to do great. And and then from the women, there was a little bit more added on and it wasn't necessarily weighing you down. It can build you up, but there's, like you said, you had these hopes and expectations and people's dreams right, kind of riding on you to like go big and, and win. And like, you gotta, we gotta take it home. And then the the outpouring of of love and and a big show, and so we we get it all wrapped up, and you don't win, and that's okay, right? I let let's 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 dig into that, right? What is that announcement? Is we won't go there. We're, we're going to leave that alone. But uh, you know, you you don't win. So what? What was the feeling in that moment? And now where are you essentially a little over a week later? Uh, that was really hard. Um, it was it was really hard because I'm extremely emotional. And it's very hard for me to hide my feelings. So, you know, I went there with the intent to... You win, you know, you're going against mm-hmm. all these people. You want to win. You want to make everyone. 
proud. So when I when they didn't announce my name officially, <laughs> I uh, at first I took it really hard and I kind of walked away. You know, ever said congratulations to David Bradford who was the winner. Mm -hmm. Talked to a few people, and then I went and seen the first person I went to visit was Kay from SV, FCEF, and that's Mama Kay, and she made she was the first one to make me cry. So I really had to go pull myself together in the bathroom. Uh, Tanya and Erica were really stood behind me for that, which was love you guys. Um, and later on, I cried again. Because there's just so much emotion. Like, I felt like I let myself down. I felt like I let my brothers down. Everyone that was rooting for me. And mm -hmm. everyone's telling me, like, you're a winner. You're, you're a winner anyways. Like, you made it this far. And, yes, I stepped out of my comfort zone. And I put myself out there. But I still ultimately didn't go what I went there for, right? Like, I still lost the title. Mm -hmm. So that was actually my first time ever competing for something. So I think that that also played a factor in it because I made myself completely vulnerable and I failed. And so it really hit me hard. But once sitting down with Daniel, Daniel and I actually had a really good conversation after that. And, um, we just talked about, you know, what what is going to come of this oper this uh, loss, I guess. And so I really put a lot of thought into it that day, like making it as far as I did, putting myself out there, being vulnerable, really. And, and for it being my very first time being vulnerable and losing, it taught me a lot about myself, mm -hmm. which essentially has is what I'm started doing all of this for you know when I started trying to figure out who I was where I'm going and what I'm doing so losing was actually the best thing for my own personal growth because they always say that you have to fail things in order to grow and I learned so much about myself um because I didn't win Interesting. Let's, we got, we're going to dig deeper. Give me, I, I, I got to interrupt this for just a second. <clears throat> the international service event, the annual flooring stone and tile sourcing experience in Las Vegas has a unique experience for the industry. Introducing the surfaces show home, Cali Boo Vineyard by Jennifer Farrell. Surfaces is working with celebrity design and TV host, Jennifer Farrell to develop a 7,300 square foot showroom in California. The home is under construction, but, Due to the due to the technology from Visualizer Plus, the industry can experience virtual room reveals each month. Then plan to view Calibu Vineyard in person or virtually summer 2022 during the home tours. Visit www.calibuvineyard.com now to sign up and join the journey. So, yes, it, it's... You don't, you can never fail in life, in my opinion, as long as you learn something. Otherwise, if you take nothing away from the experience, then, then you've actually failed. So you, you, you didn't come away with the win and, and you're saying that actually was better for you because now you have something to grow from. Why do you, why do you think you needed this to grow as opposed to being in the mindset of, no, I'm good enough. I just didn't put the right skills in place to take it away this time. And I'll just go and do it again. And next time my, my skills are going to, you know, I'm not going to make the corner mistake. And maybe that was the three points I needed and I win. I think that um, Shannon said it best for me because I, I have a hard time kind of explaining myself sometimes like the way that I am feeling. So I think that last week that everything was connected, kind of figuring out that Daniel was my mentor, um, figuring out that I needed a female mentor, then meeting the female mentor and then losing the competition. Like the universe 
is just shows up in crazy ways, right? Mm-hmm, she mm-hmm. said that I needed to let me try. I'm trying to figure this out here. I needed to be. I needed to have my own approval, not the approval of judges or the approval of people around me because I won. I needed to feel my own approval inside. So by losing, realizing that I stepped outside of my comfort zone, like extremely far out of my comfort zone and putting myself out in front of thousands of people and losing, or I'm sorry, not gaining the title that I went to gain. <laughs> um, it just really taught me that I have to, what am I trying to say? I have to be, sorry. You're good. Take your time. I just want to make sure it's going to come out right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like she said, I have to approve of myself and who I am becoming. So not gaining the title has really like taught me that, yes, losing is hard. And it sucks, but you really feel more like, like, I just, I don't even know how to explain it. I just feel like I grew from that. Mm -hmm. Like, I I really just don't know how to explain it. Well, okay. So I... I think you're right. I mean, I saw you like an hour or so afterwards and I, I could tell you were bummed, but you were in generally like good spirits, right? You can think of... You you take you take your sons to wrestling tournaments, right? And they may not lose, and and your family's really good about building them up and and letting them feel positive. But I'm sure there's times where like they just get bummed and they're crying and like I, they're kids, they get emotional very easily. And yeah. you, as you said, like you were out crying, but you were you know an hour hour and a half later, I, I saw you and you were fairly well composed and in a in a positive mindset about it. Of like, hey, look, yeah, no, I you know I didn't win, but I've learned and now I'm going to come back next year and I'm going to do it again and we're going to try. And and it was this mindset of, of moving forward, pushing forward, learning and growing from your experiences. And that's so much more positive than trying to play the victim. And it's what I know is there was, it wasn't just like people trying to in, in the situation, once again, not apply pressure to you in a bad way, but there was a lot of expectations. There's a lot of talk. There's a lot of whispers going around and it it can start adding up. And as much as that was putting pressure on, on you in the situation, I think it was putting pressures on, on the judges. And I can tell you, I, I look, I don't understand anything about the sheet vinyl or the carpet that's going on over there. Everyone knows that, but I know without even having to see what was going on, that those guys did not fall to that and that they judged it fairly and everything was look, I have a checklist in front of me. It's worth X amount of points and you either did something or you didn't do something. And that's what it was. There was there, the, no punches were pulled. I, I think that was the best thing that, that they could have done. And that's why it was so close is because it was, just it, it, they they shot it straight. They they weren't gonna like BS around. Yeah, everyone did a really good job. Um, I didn't look at anyone's box until the morning of actually of the announcement. Mm-hmm. I kind of went in there and took a look at everyone's stuff, and I'm you know the, there was some good competition there. Obviously, you know you're in the finals. You want to do your absolute best work, and uh, I love every one of those judges. Um, they, they were great and I don't, I didn't even think about the pressure being on them. So that was a, I think they all did a good job and I, I, I do, I, I know I look, those guys all have integrity. They wouldn't be there otherwise. And so it's there, there was, there's just the the feeling in the building re- uh, around this competition, there was, there was pressure from, from all over, right. Is because that's, 
we want to talk about pathways here that have been opened up for you. you. You talked about, you know, you had some stuff with with Mohawk and you had some magazine interviews. And, and now I'm sure there's even not walking away with the title. I'm sure there's still more of that on the table this time. And had had you walked away with the title, there may be more stuff. But I, I think in what you're talking about, you're you're even self-admitting like hey maybe i wasn't ready for that like i need to get myself more prepared to be able to handle anything that would that would be opened up because i can only imagine all the companies that would jump on this thing and be like hey look there there's this woman and she won this competition and like how can we use this as a marketing angle and i don't know that that's what's what's needed right like yes it's it's great don't get me wrong it's awesome for the industry but i it's not a it's not a marketing angle. It's a, this is what's possible and you can do it too angle. Like, let's just be real about it and encourage it as opposed to use it to our benefit. So what, what kind of things have come along since just being a part of the show and, and being able to go to the, you know, the women's conference and then the, the networking and then being in the competition through the finals, what, what kind of, doors have opened for you? Well, meeting uh, a lot of the women that were there, I've been in contact with a few of them since the the competition and just kind, kind of contacting different people to stay relevant. Um, you know, I, things will die down a little bit, but it is my job to kind of keep pushing things forward now. Mm-hmm. So, I love that one of the TikToks they shared was someone has to lead the way. And as nervous as I was before, now I'm feeling like I need to prepare myself to kind of be able to speak to, to other women, to kind of empower other women and get as many women as we can in the flooring industry and kind of just teach, teach them that, they probably have good hand skills too. And and flooring is not just flooring, right? Like mm-hmm. you read a tape measure, you can build things. Like it is such um, a diverse tool that can go with you forever. And so there, there's some opportunities on the table for me. Um, leaving preferred flooring was never an opportunity that I would have even thought about. <laughs> You know, this is these are the people who have helped me grow. So any opportunity that I'm taking now is just going to be helping myself grow and growing and helping the industry grow at the same time. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I don't have anything definite in the works right now, but I definitely have a lot of meetings and Zoom calls scheduled. <laughs> Which, I mean, I think it's great, right? Um, there's, you said, like, I can, you can go and kind of be a spokesperson and share your story and, and show what's possible. And I, I think that's, it, it's amazing that's what's needed. There are some women in the industry currently that participate in the, the online space and they're, some of them are heavily dogged on. And we're going to leave it at that. I think it's highly inappropriate. I, I have absolutely no respect for the people that are dogging on on those people, and uh, it, it's 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 odd to me that like we're going to tear down our own industry and then turn around and complain about how this industry doesn't get any respect. But maybe your actions are what don't bring respect to this industry. Like the, all that effort that you put into trying to drag a few people down why don't you apply that same effort into lifting the entire industry up? So uh, are there anything, is there anything you can reveal or talk about in that you have kind of plans on how you can help attract more women or are there things in the work about, you know, ideas you have of how you want to do that? Um, I have some, so uh, I have people support that are going to help me kind of build anything that I want to build. So I actually, I just have to get a hold of the people that I think that I need to in order to start 
holding, um, you know, like women's only certifications and, you know, many women's conferences and mm-hmm. having kind of empowering conferences like they did at the leadership conference. Like, like someone said, the, for women, we are just naturally empowering the way like that. Like we always just want to lift each other up. It doesn't matter if you're a woman or a man or whatever. Mm-hmm. We genuinely just love to love and we want people to be happy and positive. And so I think building on that and bringing more of those type of people into the industry is really what's going to change our industry. And so that's that's kind of what I'm looking for to to focus on just bringing more positivity and excitement and see what I can, where we can grow from there. Hmm. That's, I mean, I, I agree. I think that's needed. There's this, this, that mindset of like, Oh, you're, you're, you're not doing great. Like you, you made me mad and you throw the trial at the kid and no one wants a trial thrown at them. I, I think that well, this nurturing aspect that you're talking of we we need more of it in this industry there's not enough of i want to build you up and make you better and and help you move forward and grow in life whether you stay in this industry or not like i want to leave you better than i found you i think a lot of times it's i want to leave you worse than i found you so that you can't take what i have and that's just the it's a horribly bad attitude and that's I, I think that attitude's what's gotten us to where this industry is today. And it's it's we have to switch. We have to move in a different direction. And that's once again, I mean, that's kind of what I saw developing at surfaces this year, just with the way people that were interacting with each other and the conversations being had is it's there's a lot of people that want to move in a totally different direction and almost against the grain of where the industry has been, in my opinion, and just say, look, it's, it's this way now. And and that's where we're going. So I'm excited to see what happens, what develops and and how it plays out, especially if we can get more women involved and, and be nurtured by them. And, inspired i mean just it, it's funny that men have dominated the trades when women have like always had better attention to detail it's very confusing in how that works and i i, I you know when you when you want to look at it like i you know i don't expect a woman to haul like a giant piece of stone and, and carve it out with a giant hammer and and spike and like make that happen but is with the advancements that have happened in the past 2000 years, like, yes, we have the ability to tools can do most of the work and, and a man can haul the 50 pound bag of mortar up a set of stairs for you. And you're just grabbing a piece of tile or, or whatever and, and putting it on the wall at that point, And you can make it look a lot better and cleaner and, and be, assisted to get the work done as opposed to having to do it all yourself. Not that you can't, but there, there are differences between men and women and we're, we're built differently and better at different things. And so if, if you just need some muscle around, we might be good for that. I think that, uh, I think that men and women, we were made to compliment each other like that. But Mm -hmm. personally, I think it's really good to start from the bottom and work your way up even if that means carrying 50 pound bags of mortar up four flights of stairs. Uh, I think it just helps learn the process a little bit more and Mm -hmm. it kind of makes it a little more humble. I, I, it look once again, not that it's impossible. I I just, there's, there's a point at which, you know, Hey, I've, I've been there. I've done that. I've experienced it. You know, I, if, when I have a guy, like I'll still go and pull the toilet. I agree with you. Like I'm going to lead by example. I'm not going to just like, pass it off but at some point it may be more productive to just be able to go do what you're best at and somebody else can do what they're a little bit better at and will facilitate the process a little bit better so i I, i'm not trying to downplay it and say once again not that you can't do it you you can um 
there was a lot of you present yourself very well. Uh you 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 keep your composure. You you don't necessarily let things from what I saw, right? Like you you weren't getting frustrated and showing it. You you focus on what's at a, the task at hand. Um you couldn't really tell that you were super nervous or anything like that. And, and, and I'm sure you were right. It's you're, you're competing on a stage. You'd been there before, but look, I still like, I went and I did five talks. I was nervous before all of my talks. It, it may not appear that way as I give them, but it's different. There's, there's a thing I get nervous before I do these still. So what, what has that journey been like? I mean, is that partially because of the surgery and the the mindset training and the working out and the growth as as who you are and having your family support? Is, is that something that's that's new and you used to like wear you know everything on your sleeve? Um, no, I think I've always been pretty good at. I'm sure that my brothers would say something different. But I think that I was usually pretty good at hiding whatever I was feeling. But like all of this is extremely new to me. But I like I genuinely feel like the day I decided to start working on myself and um, just decided to dig deep and kind of learn about who I'm trying to be. That's really when my mindset, my mindset started shifting and I started carrying myself better. And I actually told someone the other day that um, Jeremy, who is one of my coworkers and best friend, he was there and he was taking pictures as I was walking up to the stage. And one of the pictures he took, he took of me, I was just like standing so tall. And I was like, man, that is a really good picture. And just noticing those little things like that within myself has really helped because it's it's the little things that you notice, right? Like you work so long and so hard on bettering yourself and just the very minor things that you notice. And it's like, whoa, I guess I have improved. <laughs> so it, it's, been a, it's been a crazy, crazy ride, but it's... It's obviously been been worth it every step of the way for me. It's it's a lot of work, kind of digging deep and learning and what to do, what not to do. You know, I still I'm working full time. I have three boys at home. I have a husband who also works full time. So we have sports after school. So it's it's a lot to find time to work on yourself, but it is absolutely necessary in order to grow. And I'm really glad that I finally jumped on board, you know, a little late, but that's okay. Uh, It's it's never late. It's it's never too late to start. That's the, the, don't, don't put that message out there. Come on. (laughs) And and then I got to get the shameless plug in, right? You're supposed to learn while you earn, go get your earbuds, go to work, put them in and go install some flooring because it's monotonously boring. And we do the same thing a lot of days, even though it's slightly different. Go go get your learn time in while you're working, and you're gonna you're gonna advance yourself. Uh, do you feel that you've been kind of pushed or thrust into a a position that you weren't ready to be in, or do you feel like this this evolved kind of naturally over the last year, year and a half or two, and like this this new role of kind of being out at the forefront, being seen, being a spokesperson almost is what you needed as, as the next part of your journey? I don't want to answer that wrong because definitely I was, I have been pushed for the last 10 years (laughs) by my brothers. But like I said earlier, they know my personality. And especially when I first started the, how low my self-esteem and confidence was, they have continuously pushed me to, to my limits. And every time they've pushed me and I've succeeded, that build, that builds my confidence a little bit more every time. So there's the things that they see, I'm sometimes oblivious to. Mm-hmm. So the push that they have given me these last few years are definitely 
they were needed and they were received. And I am very grateful for it. Um, the, the media attention, I guess, it all happened so fast, but I would, I would never turn down an opportunity to better the industry and to be a spokesperson for women. Mm -hmm. So I was, I'm extremely grateful for those opportunities as they arise as well. And Shannon, Shannon said something the other day that really stuck with me. And she, um, she says that it's time to step into my power. And I truly believe that I was, I'm, I'm meant to go the direction that I'm going. And so I'm ready to, to step into my power and kind of lead the way and learn as I go. So bear with me sometimes. I, that it, it's amazing. And I, I don't know that there's, I, I think you sum up what we've been talking about. Perfect. Like it, it's a journey and you're, you're ready to, to move forward. And you know that there's going to be like pitfalls and mistakes along the way, but we're, you're open to, to growing and, and learning and continuing. And I, I think that's just like this, this great place to, to leave this. I, I don't know that I, I, there's probably so much more, but I, I want to see where it goes and what develops. And so I, I think I kind of want to leave it here. So let me ask the question that I always have to ask. And w did I miss something that, is there something that I should have asked you? Is there a part of this journey, this, this growth, uh, these experiences that we, we didn't hit on that, we need to we need to touch on. I don't think so. Okay. I think you did a great job. Who do we need to thank? What do you, what do you, what do you, what do you got? Who who's who's out there? And it don't look. I I know that there's a lot. So don't feel bad if you miss somebody because there's a lot. <laughs> I have to thank Jeremy Glover because he told me to thank him that he better be the first person's name out of my mouth. Uh, wow. Jeremy, yeah, Jeremy is uh, my best friend of 20 plus years. We've been in school together since we were in first grade. And he's at, he's also my coworker, kind of my secondhand man at, at work. Mm -hmm. And so we, we've got a great relationship. But I truly goes out to, you know, my mom, single mom, raising us kids. And she, she did a really good job of uniting us as a family and that that's kind of what everyone's seeing right now how how strong we are together we are much stronger together and uh to daniel and jose who have pushed me every step of the way seeing uh, seeing my potential and helping me to see my potential as well and to to everyone who has had my back even Win or lose, everyone has had my back, and I appreciate all of the support and all of the love, and I can't wait to return the favor. And my husband. <laughs> Sorry, Charlie. <laughs> yeah, bless him. He, he does a lot for for our family. He's, he's home with the kids most of the time, and I'm traveling, and he's uh, really good, and he never complains. And he comes out, he comes out to the show. He's not even in flooring, like, and he's at the show all day long, like walking around with your brothers and, and the, you know, he's, he's walking around with everybody and hanging out with the family. And, and not that Tanya and Erica and everybody knows about flooring altogether, but like, I find it, my wife would like kill me if she walked around that show for three days. She'd be so bored. She'd be so bored. Oh, I know. But it's, it's funny. Cause it's, that's not, a, that's not his thing. No, it's it's his alternate personality. I always say, when he's around people, he becomes Sam Smith, and he just will talk to anyone for hours about anything. And I tell him all the time, I said, "That's why I take you because you're going to spark the conversation, and I don't have to." <laughs> <laughs> no, he we complement each other very well. I was gonna, I I do think that you're probably naturally a little more introverted, and he seems a little more extroverted. Yeah, definitely. So awesome. Um, I, I, I 
commend you. Seriously, the the having met your family has been one of the best things that's happened to me since joining this industry. Uh, I I feel very honored to have been given a t-shirt. Um, Daniel hooked me up with a, with one of the hoodies, like I and another shirt, and I was just he's just like here, here's all that stuff, and I was like, wow, like my gosh, like thank you, but like just. Knowing you guys, having met you, seeing how you interact with each other, how you support each other, and the people you know has been absolutely wonderful. And it's it, – you're all changing this industry and making a huge impact. And so thank you for what all of you have put into it and sacrificed for it and, and made those hard decisions to be away from your kids. You have three kids. You left them at home for – six days essentially and, and like thank you to your sister who who watched them and 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 sorry to her because she had to watch them. <laughs> that's a lot but it, it, it's i see so many good things happening from relationships that that started online and then we meet at these trade shows and the certifications and stuff and i can't encourage people enough that it's not just about going and making the client happy and knowing how to read the book or the instruction manual and doing it right. There is so much more to this industry than just putting the floor in or the shower in or whatever it is that you you're doing, selling the project or running the retail business and providing projects. There's a lot more going on here and the relationships being built and cultivated and the conversations that are happening to find better ways to make sure that our trade stays relevant and, and it can be seen by people because it is very hidden and behind closed doors that things take place that's what's it's so inspiring and i i'm very fortunate to have met not only your family but many many other people and uh in in the short time that i've been here like i've just it, it's been such a welcoming place and so i i guys and gals you got to go get involved you have to have to have to have to Go. I don't care if you think certifications are stupid and it's a waste of money on a sheet of paper. It's not about the sheet of paper. It's about showing that you can do it. It's about the pride you feel. It's about going and meeting people that are like-minded and want to excel and move forward. And, and that's what's going to happen when you go to the conventions and the certifications and the training classes or even just the local manufacturer rep coming out and holding a demo. The people that are willing to go to events like that will change your life. Absolutely. Go. And it, it's such a fresh breath of air. It's, like, it's reinvigorating every time. Every single time. It's, you need that, you need that boost. You, you have to be able to like, once again, the the projects in this field can get monotonous. It, it's it's another rectangle. Whoop de doo, right? It, this one may be eight by ten. The next one's twelve by fifteen, but it's a rectangle. Or you know, it, you're kind of doing the same motions over and over again, and it can get old. And you can love what you do, but it can get old. Yeah, and being able to go to these events and talk with people, like it, it's reinvigorating. It brings your passion back. And it's it's needed. Like if you really truly want to move forward in this industry, you need to get involved. Whether that's locally, nationally, internationally, whatever you need to do, please step out, take a chance, and see what happens when you do it. And don't be afraid to walk up to anybody. I think that's the biggest thing. Um, you were at the you were asked to be an ambassador like myself at the the international surface event uh first timers like happy hour networking kind of event because it, it can be intimidating to go to the show and you see all these people walking up to each other and hey i love you like man i can't believe it's been like 3 years since we saw each other man it's so good to see you after 6 months or i've always loved talking to you online but it's great to meet you and like you see all these people being 
friendly and all the camaraderie and stuff, and it can be intimidating to want to get involved. I'll tell you what, if you walk up to somebody and they're at one of these shows and they don't want to give you the time of day, you didn't want to deal with that person anyways, because pretty much everyone I've ever met is like, nice to meet you. How can I help you? How can I assist you in growing? Like everyone is just outpouring with any knowledge, information, time. It's an absolutely wonderful experience. So in order to grow, you need to be attending these events because the the people that are there are also the people who are wanting to grow and learn. And mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. being together and learning from each other is the only way to grow our industry. Yes. All right. I'm going to hop down off my soapbox. Thank you for listening to my rant at the end of the episode. I appreciate it. Um, Crystal, thank you so much for your time. If people want to reach you, how can they find you? Um, on Facebook, Crystal Marie Sims. And uh, what is my email is crystal at preferredflooringmi.com. I am also on Instagram, but I don't really check that as often as I should. Oh, and I'm also on LinkedIn now. Crystal Sims on LinkedIn. Check it out. And uh, at Preferred Flooring, visit our website, preferredflooringmi.com. You see a lot of our work and you get to see my beautiful face all over the website. (laughs) Awesome. Once again, thank you. I truly appreciate it. And uh, I know we we will talk again soon. Thanks, Kyle. I appreciate you. You're welcome. Flooring Domain is an award-winning online flooring directory and service marketplace that helps you find more clients, grow your online presence, your reputation, or your brand. Whether you're a carpet store, flooring installer, perhaps a tile contractor, there are projects for everyone with a daily stream of clients visiting Flooring Domain and looking for experts like you. Flooring Domain offers a free listing option that allows you to find new client leads. You can set up a free account at Flooring Domain by visiting flooringdomain.us. Have you ever tried to install LVP on steps only to struggle with the solution for the stair nose? Introducing Snap Caps by SnapTech. You simply send SnapTech the exact LVP your client selects, and they'll turn it into a perfectly matched stair nose that clicks flush into the tread plank for a simple and reliable solution. Visit www.snaptech.biz to learn more or order. All right, folks, that's it. Thanks for joining us. Make sure you check out the FloorAcademyPod.com. You can visit our shop. You can find some awesome swag like uh, the, the shirt in the background there. Um, we got we got all kinds of great stuff. We got uh, coverings coming up in April. So, you know, hop on there, get the fanny pack, and then you can put all your stuff in your fanny pack and look totally awesome at coverings because everyone should support fanny packs these days. Uh, what else we got? Check out the uh, business budget analyzer. We've got uh, what else is going up on there? I've got a insurance claim kind of thing tool to like keep track of your tools. Uh, I'm working on a. I got a job, not a you know like a a profit margin calculator. I got to get up on there. That should be out by the time this episode airs on the podcast. Uh, you know, I got all kinds of stuff going on. We've got new mastermind classes starting in, starting at the beginning of April. I've got 10 spots available for Tuesday nights. I got five spots on Thursday, on Tuesday nights. I got five spots on Thursday night. So well, when this airs, we'll probably be all filled up. But if you're interested, we, we've been running one since October. It's done absolutely amazing things for the participants, businesses, I've got reviews coming out, so check them out in the Floor Academy group. And then in the future, I will probably open up some more mastermind groups. But as of now, there are two. And so if you're listening to this, reach out, ask me for the info. Happy to get it to you. And until then, we will talk to you next week. Thanks, everybody.